So, first reactions to Zen 3. Let's hit the intro. What's your minimum specification? So AMD just announced Zen 3, uh, Ryzen 5000, next generation high-end performance desktop systems, uh, ranging from 6 cores with the 5600X all the way up to 16 cores with the 5950X. Uh, they're claiming 19, 19% increase in raw clock-for-clock -clock performance, uh, better power efficiency, also best single-threaded, best multi-threaded, best 1080p gaming performance, uh, power efficiency did already say that they're basically saying that they have the best desktop CPU on the market flat. Uh, it's going to be a lot of interesting things to talk about. Uh, launch for November 5th. Um, apparently all four SKUs are going to be available on November 5th. Um, prices are a little bit higher this time. Uh, so let's get into the details. So first off, let's look at the SKU list. Um, top of the line is a 5950X Ryzen 9. Uh, base frequency of 3.4 GHz and a turbo frequency of 4.9 GHz. Ever so close to the 5 GHz mark. I think that would have been an interesting marketing message. Perhaps they'll keep it for a, a future product, or maybe we'll see it as Zen 4. don't know. 5 GHz is always that fun marketing point. Uh, but AMD seems to have plenty of marketing points with uh, this series of products already. Uh, this chip has 64 megs of L3 cache. Uh, you may see it listed as having 72 megs of cache elsewhere. That's the L2 plus L3. I keep asking these companies to split the L2 and the L3 out um, because some journalists don't understand the difference. Um, but 64 megs of L3, uh, 105 watt TDP. Um, there were rumors that this would be 150 watts. No, AMD is categorically saying that the way they've designed it and the way they've used TSMC 7 nanometer, 7 nanometer means that they can increase the IPC by 19%, overall performance by about 24%, I think they said, uh, and still kept it within that 105 watt TDP. Now, uh, AMD's uh, turbo power consumption is usually limited to 142. That's what they rate their socket for, and that's what most most motherboards will apply. Um, so it'll, tur it'll turbo up to 142, and then you know slowly come back down uh, to an average of uh, 105. So that's a top-end chip. It's going to retail for 799 that's the MSRP, uh, which is $50 more than the 3950X, uh, which is was also the 16-core part, but you get, what, 200 megahertz more on the turbo? and 19% uh, more IPC. So $50 more for that, I think you, I think most people would take it, to be honest. Um, the sort of people who buy these chips are the ones who want performance almost at any cost, and AMD's belief that they have the performance crown now uh, is means that they can charge more. Uh, they still believe they have the performance per dollar crown, um, so it'll be interesting to see when we get these chips into test. Uh, one thing to point out, though, is with the 5950X, is uh, this chip is... One of the two chips they represented as having the new single thread performance record. Um, so along with the 19% IPC, uh, AMD also showcased uh, Cinebench R20 single thread uh, with this chip scoring 640 uh, at 4.9 uh, gigahertz. Compare that to Intel's Tiger Lake, uh, which is the second generation Cove on 10 nanometer. Um, that scored 595. So AMD is claiming an absolute lead here. Um, again, we fun to test to see where that goes on. Second processor in the stack is the Ryzen 9 5900X. This is a 12-core, 24-thread part, uh, 3.7 gigahertz base and a 4.8 gigahertz turbo. This also has 64 megs of L3 cache. It's 105 watt TDP, same as the other Ryzen 9. Uh, and MSRP is 549 bucks, which is another $50 lift. Uh, this is a CPU that AMD initially announced as the best gaming CPU uh, that they're going to offer. Uh, then they showcased the 5950 after that and said this is even better so uh we'll be interested to see what that extra 100 uh, megahertz on the turbo uh but the uh 5900x has 300 megahertz higher on the base what that does to actual performance um then we get the ryzen 7 and the ryzen 5 this is the 5800x 600x we're looking at eight cores six cores these are models with one chiplet because we're still keeping the same one and two chiplet designs from the, the Zen 2 Ryzen 3000 family. Um, and these will, again, be sort of $50 more expensive than their counterparts. And it's the Ryzen 5, which is the only um, 
65 watt TDP chip on the stack, and this will actually come bundled with a cooler. AMD was clear that um, any chip that's kind of above 95 watts, uh, they see their customers as using their own coolers. If they bundled, say, the 125 watt cooler in, they would have to design the chip with that as the lowest common denominator, which may shave one or 200 megahertz off um, what they actually ship. So they decided to get do away with the cooler and say, look, these chips are for people who want performance, uh, so you're going to have to get your own cooler, whereas the 65-watt parts, they're just happy to bundle a cooler in. And it's interesting because I'm looking for a more sort of low-powered system at home, so I'm interested in what happens with the 65-watt parts. Um, all these parts have you know comparisons to Intel's Comet Lake, uh, which is still on 14 nanometers. Uh, we get these chips in this test, and it will definitely be interesting to see what happens. With regards to the microarchitecture, AMD isn't giving too many details away this time around. Uh, we have a 8-core CCX now, rather than two 4-core complexes in a single chiplet. This means a unified L3 cache, and AMD says that the latency in that sort of 16 to 32 megabyte range uh, is is now a lot lower because you're no longer accessing DRAM, and AMD believes that it's that sort of area where games uh, can really see the benefit. Uh, specifically, uh, CTO Mark Papermaster said that because games usually have a dominant thread, uh, because that dominant thread will now have access to 32 megabytes of L3 cache, uh, it will be making fewer trips out to main memory um, in that sort of 16 to 32 megabyte window, which should help performance in games that are CPU limited. Uh, because of the unified uh, CCX with the full 8 cores, uh, now the core-to-core -core communication... Um, especially when you when you previously were going between one CCX to another on the same chipset, now no longer has to go off, die, and back. So there should be some additional performance gains there, um, and that all ties into power. When it comes to the I.O. die, we've got the same I.O. die as in Zen 2. Um, AMD was clear that the uh, the improvements here wasn't necessarily on the I.O. die this time, um, though they still you know upgraded they upgraded and optimized the algorithms that deal with power management, both on the cores and the I.O. die. Um, so there will be some slight improvement there, um, though whether it will be actually noticeable to the user. With Zen 2, the IO die was uh, idling anywhere from, say, 13 watts to 20 watts, depending on the SKU. Um, so it's going to be something that AMD is going to have to bring down at some point, uh, just so there's more power for the cores, and that will give them you know, a healthy frequency bump, especially for those sort of low, uh, mid to low uh, processors in the stack. Um, I actually asked CTO Mark Papermaster about this, and he said, um, you know, when we move from PCIe Gen 4 to PCIe Gen 5, um, there's obviously going to be a lot of optimizations there around power, um, just because of the new standard. So we might see something extra come in at that time as well. Uh, other elements to the microarchitecture, AMD is claiming that uh, the load... Uh, Load per cycle and the store per cycle is a lot higher. Improvements to the branch prediction, improvements to the micro op cache. Uh, it sounds like this is a new wider core. Um, so one of the questions coming into Zen 3 is, well, is it an iteration of Zen 2 or is it a ground up design? Um, and we were told it was a you know, newly ground up design and we were kind of umming and ahhing and AMD isn't necessarily talking about micro architecture right now. We'll find out more on November 5th. Uh, but they have said, yes, it is actually, you know, maybe at a 100,000 foot level, at the super high level, it's a Zen that everybody recognizes. Um, but as you go down, they say that every part of the core has been um, redesigned to be optimized, uh, still on the same 7 nanometer process uh, as before, but just designed and optimized for performance. Um, so with the... We're expecting to see you know, a wider issue, um, and when asking Mark Papermaster about that, he said uh, th they've managed to keep the power the same, even though the core is now wider. Um, again, more details on November 5th. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Um, now, one of the things uh, Jim Keller, ex-AMD, ex-Intel now, um, said is that when you design a core, you know, you can get, you know, sort of three, four, five generations of upgrades, getting that low-hanging fruit performance, but you have to do a sort of ground-up design every now and again um, just to reset the baseline expectations. Uh, Mark was very clear that this is that ground-up redesign. Um, it's not just 
getting the low hanging fruit from Zen 2 and making it into Zen 3. Um, Zen 3, while still Zen, uh, is ground up and there's new low hanging fruit to get. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, when it comes to Infinity Fabric, into, um, sorry, AMD has said that, uh, no real change to the Infinity Fabric, although there is some um, security enhancements in place. Uh, AMD was very keen to point out you know, um, security and resilience to the new types of attacks that now happen on uh, these sorts of cores. Um, return object programming um, threats in Zen 3, you know, there are mitigations here for that and t- uh, to avoid those. More detail to come. Some of that is more enterprise-focused, so we're waiting until we hear for Zen 3 on Epix, which would be the Milan platform. AMD has committed to talking about uh, more Zen 3 later this year, I believe, so we're hoping that we see Epic before uh, before Christmas, hopefully before CES as well. Uh, other news on Ryzen 5000 series is chipset support. So 500 series chipsets will be supported. Um, users who currently have a 500 series chipset who are looking to upgrade uh, need to make sure that they're at least on a Giza 1080. Um, a Giza 1080 or above will definitely boot the new processors, but in order to get the best performance, you'll need a Giza 1100. Um, and if uh, companies haven't got a Giza 1100 out in their biases yet, uh, they should do shortly. Now, one of the big questions coming in was, uh, what about 400 series chipsets? Um, there's a big cry when AMD initially announced that 400 series wouldn't be supported, so now they're working with vendors to support 400 series. Um, we were told that that work is still ongoing. Uh, motherboard vendors will have beta BIOSes for Ryzen 5000 come January. Um, those will be beta, they won't be finalized. Uh, we expect they, them to be finalized more sort of Q1, maybe beginning of Q2. Um, though users who currently have a 400 series board with, say, a 2000 or 3000 series chip, who are looking to upgrade, you may have to wait until sort of Q1, end of Q1, um, and you never know, there may be some price reductions at that point. Um, but for anybody who's going in buying new, um, buying new, get a 500 series motherboard. Now, there is a possibility that if you buy a 500 series motherboard uh, today, it won't have the Agisa 1080 that you need. AMD is still implementing its bootkit program, uh, so they will loan you a processor in order to update that BIOS, to the latest version, so you can put your processor in. Um, you know, a couple of forms to fill in, um, and they give you, a, 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 I believe it's like maybe two weeks or so to get it done. Um, so that's available. Um, they're committed to keeping that available for those who need it, though they think it's going to be less of an issue. Um, so if you're buying at retail, uh, it might be worth dropping a line saying, uh, can you confirm that the BIOS has been updated to at least 1080? Um, a Giza 1080, and uh, they might be able to do it for you without needing all this bootkit malarkey. Um, so yeah, November 5th, um, going to be reviews, microarchitecture, and retail. Uh, we're going to see on October 28th, AMD talk about um, RX 6000 series, a new uh, Navi and Big Navi uh, GPUs. Uh, that's going to be interesting. Um, AMD's got a lot to talk about, a sort of AMD plus AMD build uh, that I think is going to be their focus moving into the holiday season and into Q1, um, especially when one would question what else is there to talk about from any of the competition. Um, obviously, Intel right now currently has Comet Lake 10th Gen, which is still 14 nanometer up to 5.3 gigahertz. 10900K is their flagship but that seems to be out of stock in a lot of places. So AMD launched the 10850K, which is about 200 megahertz lower and a bit cheaper. So realistically, for anybody going out and buying any of these chips, the comparison to look out for will be the 10850K versus the um, the, the Ryzen 5000 series that you're after. AMD, ha- uh, sorry, Intel has said that Rocket Lake, their next generation core, will appear in Q1, probably end of Q1, um, and that will have PCIe 4, no world on the microarchitecture there, probably still 14 nanometer as well. Um, it's going to be an interesting time during 2021. Um, if Intel can't regain at least one of the key metrics, uh, AMD might run away with it in 2021. Yeah, I'm keeping my hands up and keeping my, keeping my options open until I get the chips in to test.
and benchmark and verify AMD's claims. AMD has historically, since the start of Den, been very good with the claims they put out into into the press with their marketing, but I still want to verify. Um, one last thing I did did forget: memory. Uh, still, DDR2, uh, sorry, DDR4 3200 is um, is the supported frequency on these new processors. Uh, AMD says that 3600, 3733 is still going to be your sweet spot. Uh, so if you've got memory in mind, that's a that's around that you can go ahead and buy it now, and it's uh, that's going to be the sweet spot for the new 5000 series. Um, yeah, this is going to be fun, and you know where to see all the information. Tech Tech Potato for you. <laughs>